What up, y'all? It's your boy Danny. We're back this week with another episode of Callbacks. This episode, we got some memories from my boss, Wheezy, and another guy with a great hairline, also funny, Eddie. Check it out. All right. Callbacks, take number 46. Welcome to another episode of Callbacks. We've done this intro so many times. So many. I am your co-host, Sam Salem. I am Dan Dan the Man Man. Yeah, you better put some respect on his name. Put some respect on my name, please. But this is a great, this is a great episode. We got two very important people uh, on today's pod. Uh, some good stories, some good callbacks, some great callbacks, some great dates. If you're new to the program, this is the podcast where myself and Danny Sellers do deep dives on interesting people in Hollywood. Please don't say my last name. Thank you. We're using government names always and forever around here. Thank you. And uh, before we get into that interview, we like to do a trademark mental health check. Danny, lay it on us. My mental health check this week is very simple, okay? I am not depressed. I am depressing. <laughs> you just you just killing vibes? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, like ment- internally, I'm not depressed, but my energy is probably not good for it most people right now yeah i'm with that it is on that same way i'm on that same wave big therapy vibes Uh, do you like therapy or what's the bro i love my therapist so much i white guy white girl black guy yeah he's uh he's a white dude he's definitely older than me nice i don't know how old he is but i i feel like when it comes to therapy I'm like, I got to be one of your faves. Ooh, that's fav- a, favorite? Yeah, come on. I know they're playing favorites. And that's got to be like, I'm not like most clients. <laughs> you <laughs> you, look forward, you look forward to my trauma. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love my therapist so much that sometimes when like something happens that pisses me off, I'm like, Just text them. I can't wait to tell. I can't wait to tell them about this. No, I never talk to him outside of therapy. I feel like that'd be bizarre. But think shout out, charge you? You shout out Kevin. Charge you? Would he? That's no, crazy. I don't know. I've been going through some really messed up life stuff. And one time he like, I couldn't make it on time. And he like started an, a th- session late and ran late and like didn't charge me for it. So I feel like he sets boundaries where he's not just going to go crazy, but he allows, he's still like a human being. He's I'd not just a like a bank. Therapist. I feel like if I was a therapist, I'd be just wanting to know the T like, ooh, what did they say? But I feel like <laughs> the craziest part about therapy to me is like, you can't tell anybody anything. That doesn't, have, that's, that's not true. Yeah. I think for the could. most part they don't though and what's yeah. I don't know like if you tell me something and you say I can't tell anybody you better believe that my wife knows I'm not <laughs> bro I'm not clip it up brother <laughs> clip it up I'm not <laughs> that's funny that's juicy bro I'm not just yeah, gonna yeah, not yeah, if you yeah, tell yeah. me the juicy you can't tell a single soul <laughs> yeah, I'm trying, I'm you trying. better believe I'm texting her as you're telling me it <laughs> I got her on speakerphone. I was like, well, I was in the middle of a call. She's going through the AirPods right that's now. That's funny as hell. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that that's a certain level of trust where you could tell. And I think in law, isn't it in law your your spouse can't uh, testify against you or whatever? So you might Probably. legally be bound to. Hey, the Bible says we're one. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to JC. <laughs> that boy a fool with it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you really be walking on that water though. That boy, a fool with it though. Um, um, yeah. Shout out bro. mental health. Shout out to. I'm, I'm not depressed. I'm depressing. Put yes, it on a sir. t-shirt. I feel like everything you say is just merch ready to go. Trademark your boy. That's awesome to hear. Um, anything else we got to touch on before we get into this episode? No, it's a long one. It's a long episode. Let's get into this episode, man. Episode something something with Eddie and Wheezy. Check it out. Welcome back to another episode of Callbacks. We are here. I guess we already did our intro, so we, we can go. You do it. this every single time. Could we start the and I just, with the guest first, but we all do. We do an actual intro. That's fine. You don't care. But mm. fuck it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I yes. care about you. So we're here. We're here with uh, one person that pays my or signs my checks and another <laughs> one who uh, influences one of my biggest influences. Hey. Whoa. What a kind Daniel. thing to say. Should we get should we get a should we get an official proper introduction like we like to do? Yeah, let's do it. All right, for the first time on callbacks, we have multiple guests. Two, oh. but, but let's make sure they each get their own proper. What number episode are we? Yes, um, ten, nine, I think. I want to oh. be a double digit. Okay, double. We'll make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> make that happen. Yeah. 
So guest number one left Jumbo. her six-figure job as a sales engineer and enterprise account executive Ooh. to start what is now one of the top podcasts in the world. Horrible decisions. The whole world. When she's not hosting podcasts, she's making appearances on networks like HBO, BET, and Showtime mm. and was just named Quick appearances. head of the audio division of Kenny O'Barris' production company before becoming a bi-coastal elite. Elite. Mm -hmm. She was living in the affluent area of Orlando. That is before digital camera and camera okay. phones tanked her father's <laughs> antique camera shop business. Okay, okay. We are humbled and welcome to the pod. Who wrote that? Someone who has a weird thing for Mark Marin, a lover of Outback Steakhouse. Oh. And the person Kiki Palmer, Kiki Palmer referred to as her everything, Wheezy WTF. Ooh, Wheezy. Wow. AKA Gila Shlomi, oh. or as the mean kids in her high school called her, Blow Me Shlomi. Uh huh. <laughs> or. As she was known on Plenty of Fish, Free Spirit 407. Whoa! Oh, call, that's a fucking callback for your deep, ass. That's a deep, hoary cut. I fucked, <laughs> I fucked my first white guy on there. Nice. A lot of people Same did. Brad. I was a lot of people. Hold Brad. on. So did I. <laughs> when did Kiki Palmer say that? Where can I find it? Uh, you know what? I just keep my ear to the ground. Maybe it was a personal conversation. Maybe it was uh, somewhere out, oh, floating out there. Based on resumes alone, I mean, I should have went first. I mean, you're hard to follow with that one. But anyway. No, I am not. <laughs> well, who you're here now is like guest number two. And together they make up the podcast for fact's sake, which you can check out on Patreon. Uh, guest number two is from the six. That's six, 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 six. That's Toronto for all you uncultured people out there. But moved to the United States at 32 Ooh. after flourishing in the Canadian stand-up and TV ago. scene. That was two years ago. <laughs> two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Although he is now a successful headliner that tours the country and runs LA's best indie show totally at Bar Lubitsch. At 17, he was booed off stage so brutally that he wouldn't return to stand up for four years. Ooh. Very true. We are absolutely buzzing. So, also, welcome to the pod, a man who hasn't had a day job since 2006. Oh, Woo. shit. York, York University's most famous sociology major, and a man who, according to his mother, won't be able to find a wife because of his snoring. Mm, that's very true. <laughs> Eddie Del Siepe. Hey. Welcome hey. to the pod. We like long I, intros. Sociology here. degree. I forgot about that. My brother, you know, it's funny. I, was, I have a minor in psych. My mom actually called me recently and said, Your brother's really, really sad and depressed. And I was like, Oh, no. She's like, You got a psychology degree? Talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> I like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. I forgot about that. Damn. Enough, Isn't it crazy how jobs work now? Because it's like, fucking having a degree is a big accomplishment. I didn't get to finish college. So, mm -hmm. like, I just really admire people that did. And it's fucking nuts. I but know. that didn't stop you from outselling all the Wall Street types in New York at your sales job. Bro, mm -hmm. fuck all of them. Like, I want to know about this. I, I don't. Tits. I don't know about this era of your life. So, what was it like? like what got you from Florida? Can we actually start? Because this is our yeah. first. This oh, is. Let, let's, let's just jump in straight to. Or a date. I'm sorry. Save the date. All right. Mm. Our, our favorite segment where we like to give people dates about their life. So, May 5th. I believe 2017. Cinco de, yeah. Mayo. Cinco, Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de Mayo. You want to know something crazy about May 5th? Uh huh. Moved to New York, by the way, if you didn't hear that. That's next what May 5th, which is next week, I'm going to be hosting the Breakfast Club. And I literally. Oh, wow. Congrats. Wow. wow. Not forever. Sorry. I guess that was you. Oh, that was for the huge. Club. But like, I literally was sitting there. I had this very surreal moment yesterday. I posted this clip of Charlemagne talking about horrible and saying it's the best he's ever seen. And like, I'm. He said that to us before, but watching him say it with Andrew was crazy oh, because yeah. they were the first podcast I'd ever seen live. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I thought about Cinco de Mayo and I'm like, oh my God, like eight years ago I moved to New York at that date. Now the breakfast club, like just crazy how these dates come back around. But like, when did you move? May 5th, when? What year? 2016. 16? Damn. Wow. It's like it's long ago, but it's not years? that long ago. No, it's not eight years, seven years. Seven years ago. Okay, seven years. Damn. Oh man. Maybe it was 15 then. When did I talk to you on the phone? Remember that? Six months after. So I, how how I know Eddie is, I was a really big fan of Barely Friending podcast, and I called. Peaked him. at number four on iTunes charts. Mm. That shit was so funny. Like some of my hardest laughs came from that podcast. But uh, I remember, like, became friends online, and I was like, "Yo, I'm thinking about starting a podcast." And literally, something you said to me is something I said on stage at the iHeart show last week and I literally didn't even mean to take it like it was my own but now I really believe it mm -hmm. Eddie said to me if you're in it for the money don't do it because it's just not going to be worth your time mm -hmm. like you're going to be so frustrated you're going to want to quit and that was advice I gave people but I know it's a true thing because I didn't make money on my podcast 
I quit three and a half years. I think too. people can sense it. If there's not a genuine connection, they can sense it. And right. if you're just like, if you're constantly asking like, hey, how, when do we get ads? Then you're not concentrating on the conversation, the flow of it, whatever. It's yeah. almost like being... It's like being an actor or a comic where you're like, well, when, when am I going to play Carnegie Hall? Like, bro, you got to yeah. enjoy the small stuff yeah. and then let that happen and realize like, wow. Same thing with podcasting. I think now, especially in podcasting, you, you see a lot of people that are just like, oh man, when I need to get on Rogan. Or I need to do this. I need to do that. I'm like, mm -hmm. bro, just people gravitate towards conversations. I really do. And I think now, I've, I've sociology degree coming. I think <laughs> we're so disconnected. What? We're so disconnected. Yeah. Nobody calls anybody anymore. I, when's the, uh, yeah, getting know, a phone call is startling. Startling. I call my friends because we're all the same age. And <laughs> but I think more than ever, Gen Z, you can this generation, don't listen, don't don't have conversations. So now they have to listen to conversations. Yeah. Because there's some people that Ooh, have friends that they only talk to via text and the only time they talk in person is when they're in person. So I think as humans, innately, primitively, we need conversation. And now we listen to people have conversations. I read a list. People write, listen to two friends rather than talk to their own friend. It's yeah, crazy. A thousand percent. I think the one pushback on that, because I, I substitute teach now. I used to full-time teach. And kids will just have their friend on their FaceTime for the whole day. I feel like they don't talk in person as much anymore. I think those kids are rebelling against this Gen Z never talking to each other at all. I don't think they ever talk on the phone, like a straight up phone call. Mm -hmm. But like, I know I have a bunch of students that are like, yeah, either my best friend or my boyfriend or my girlfriend or whoever, they'll get home from school, FaceTime them and just have them on FaceTime. Why, why do people, the only people that, that FaceTime are like really old people or really young people. Isn't that kind of funny? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like old people like, I'm in the store. And then I mean, I FaceTime, but like that sitting on the phone thing, one of my friends said that to me. I had got like super depressed two years ago, and she was like, "Oh, like we can just sit on Facetime. You don't have to talk." No. And I was like, "Bitch, no. I'm eating Cheetos all over my face. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Remember being a kid? I mean, I'm older, but yeah, I used to be on the landline all night, just like Hog talking to a friend. Like, what the hell is a landline? <laughs> all night, just like <laughs> I was on AOL doing like trying to. AOL. Oh, you I was good? on AOL, damn near being a prostitute. Oh, that was yeah. Our air, yeah, our age was like we outside, like, sending ASL. nudes willy nilly. Just I said cares. fake nudes because like I didn't have a webcam, but also I was too young. But I wanted guys to just like fucking be on my dick. And at the, that point, I didn't know how I would convert it into money, but I was trying to find a way. I got catfished so hard in the beginning. Ooh, really? Oh yeah, one woman like, put me on a uh, just a full on like just a quest to find finally meet this person and I, I was at a coffee shop waiting for three hours never you showed lying. up three hours and then my friend i told a friend about this like Sick. wait a second what's her name and i said i can't remember her name was and he's like let me guess and he, and he, and he showed me a picture on his phone and i go yeah he's like me too man <laughs> Guys are so dumb on the internet. Can I? I was talking about this today. Bro, bro this hey, apology. Listen, listen. This is a different time, dude. Okay. No one's net no. savvy. I'm not like the guy. This is like 2004. Okay, five? yeah. Sure. I'll forgive okay. you. I'll forgive you a little this bit. This is pre MySpace, bro. I was just thinking on the drive over here. I have heard multiple male comics do a stand up bit oh, about yeah. how some woman is talking to them on the internet, Facebook, whatever, and then gets them, like, sends them, like, a nude or a video or whatever, and then it's like, well, you have to send one back now. And then they do, and then she's like, I'm going to send this out to all your friends, family, and the whole public if you don't give me $1,000. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I've never heard, no female has ever fallen for that kind of scam, girl, and I yes. fear male after male fall for that scam. I had a girl being horny on the internet. yesterday, and I'm like, man, I don't know. Doc dudes Rivers. Love, like, dudes love nudes. I'm yeah, not sending that shit. I'm not sending that. Well, now, now, now the new thing is now the new thing is ai right ai is gonna scare wait you. have you ever sent your dick out uh to someone i was dating yeah this is well, going out okay, to okay, 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 this okay, is going okay. to public so back, to the, back to the first date so may 5th <laughs> 2016 you move from orlando to new york so what because that's crazy this is not that long ago that i'm sh i'm sure you were living a good life but you you know regular nine to five and now you're touring the country having you're hanging out with very famous people, you, you know, all the time. So, and Beyonce. <laughs> yeah, hangs out with Beyonce for real. I don't know how much I can say, but okay, I really didn't hang out with her. It's just I was with her all night and like <laughs> how big of a room? Know. I mean, you're Give about me to feet. host the break. Feet? How many? How many feet away? Uh, where Danny's sitting. Nice. Wow. Nice. So two feet from each other. Wow. No, yeah. That's crazy. So what, what? 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 What brought you to New York from Orlando? Yeah. Um, I Let's worked. Hear that story. <laughs> I worked for T-Mobile and literally. I had wanted to move. I think when you're the person that's like in your city and you're like too weird for where you live, it's like, yeah. well, where else can I go? Right. Yeah, I, was, yeah. I found myself always traveling to New York. Um, and then eventually I told my company like, I need to move. 
find a job for me. I was training people at the time and managing a store. And then they moved me to Brighton Beach to run to be an associate at a T-Mobile store, by the way. Where's Brighton Beach? Brighton Beach is like the end of Queens, I think. Oh, okay. It's like okay. super Russian. Everybody was like, what the fuck are you doing in Brighton Beach? But they didn't know where to put me. Right, right. And I was a rep. And I was managing and training, doing all this shit. And they put me basically like, I had to get demoted just to move to New York. But I had a sugar daddy to move me there. So I ain't uh, there. Of course. But finally, after that. Was moved. it always New York in the back of your mind? Did you ever consider another state? Yeah. LA, nothing? Always New York, huh? It's still always New York. And I love LA that's now. Real, that's real. When I was young, like I, was, I, I thought about tatting New York on my arm. You should. I mean, you pay taxes enough there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they should pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When I was when I was leaving college and I lived in North Carolina, still, it was three cities. It was L.A., New York, or San Francisco. Really? I, like big yeah. dreamer people, I think want to do yeah. that. Mm. Are you from L.A.? No, I grew up in Minneapolis area, yeah, really? suburbs. Oh. Oh. Up place except you. Did you always want? <laughs> did you always want to live in the states? You know, I'll, just... always want to live in the states. Always, always, uh -huh. always. Why is that a Canadian thing? Because you know, show business up there is it, it never felt. You know what it feels like? It feels like if we're like Australia or the UK, you got your own culture. You're kind of secluded away from the United States, but because. 80% of the television I watched was from the, was from American. Right. You just wanted to be in the big leagues. That's Part what it that. felt like. Mm -hmm. Australians are like UK, whatever. They have their own whole, you know, yeah. whole culture there. Yeah. But it was I guess always Toronto didn't become that cool until like Drake. a decade ago. Don't Drake, honestly. Yeah. Speaking of show business, in, <laughs> in Canada, let's get to, let's get to our two dates for you because they kind of relate to each other. We got, I doubt you'll be able to guess these. I'd be so impressed. But August 15th, 2005 and August 28th, 2009. They 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 deal with each other in your TV appearances. August 5th, 2005. <laughs> okay, some really good hints. You said TV appearance. Was that the first time I appeared on Much Music's Video on Trial? So that is the first time <laughs> it ever aired Video on Trial on Much Music, which is like Canadian MTV, I'm gathering. Yeah, yeah. No. There's like a Canadian version of MTV yeah. called Much Music. And uh, I just know Eddie's famous from it because Justin Bieber knew him. Oh, oh, Justin Bieber knows you. That's actually a flex. That's oh, a flex. Uh, <laughs> hey, what up, big bro? Big bro. Uh, yeah, so that was the video? debut of that show, which you obviously were from 2006 to 2013. We do have, we'll, we'll add this uh, in post. But I have to see it now. <laughs> I don't know where to hold this. You know how much upkeep it requires? <laughs> Gel, hairspray. <laughs> I didn't write that. They told me to write that. They, they, they wrote that for me. This stuff isn't cheap. I'm talking thousands. And Look at that V-neck. <laughs> oh Do you know how many what tricks I have to turn to afford all this? <laughs> so do me a favor God, and we'll so watch old. video on trial. Because it's tough telling jokes with a d*** in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> why, why? That's so unnecessary. Though. I don't know. Son, Dude, you got to post dick it. In your mouth. That is, <laughs> that is a 10-year-old promo. Oh, my God. I didn't write that. That went on national television. That went on national television. This one I love. His arms are so awkward. I couldn't stop staring. <laughs> Still to this day. I find uh. him so drop dead gorgeous. That's from Muscle Jack. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I get a lot of that. The funnier people on this show, in my opinion. Damn, dude. So the way Couldn't that show, the way that show worked was it was like best week ever slash guy code. Okay. Uh -huh. And we just made fun of music videos. So all we did was roast music videos. Oh. Uh, and it was just kind of like talking head and like That's fun. Yeah, hundred percent improv. The, the the producer was just like a studio just like this, which uh -huh. is like just go and just and and I would just take notes, take the video before, the day before, and just just go free flow. Everything was different. And it was all you and you didn't play a character, just you. So it was a great promotion for yourself. And I must have been on that show. It got me my green card. I was on that show for uh, maybe like over a hundred episodes, maybe more. Wow! And, and yeah. This was this is pre, this is pre Instagram. Why is that shit not in your bio? I know. Talk your shit, King. Uh, and, and it, it was so big, and I, I'm not kidding. Like, it would follow me around for, you know, up until maybe three, four years ago. I'd still get people come up to me like, "Yo, really? Did yeah. they ever say they know where you're from, but they don't know all where? the time?" All the time. I used to get on dating apps back in the day. Like, are you the guy? That's back when I go back home all the time. Do you know yeah. that I did that to Liam Neeson once? Oh, Nielsen, really? Whatever his name is. Like on yeah. the dating app or just in No, no, no. I said, I feel like I know you, but I don't remember where we met. It's famous as fuck. And then I was like, are you a professor? <laughs> oh, my God. And he was like, no. But he was smiling. And I think he thought I was lying until he realized I was serious. And I was like, I, I, live in, I used to live in Orlando, but I just feel like I've met you so many times. And he was like, oh, no, I actually don't live around here. And then, but he was really nice. And then, like, we were 
I just remember right after I was so embarrassed, bro. So I was like, how do you not know the fuck that I is? I know. Damn. Yeah. It, that's, uh, I think we talked about this last episode, but I, I've embarrassed myself in front of so many, He's um, bad at in, in front of so many famous people. But the worst was, uh, <laughs> I was on a sh this social media shoot for AT&T and my friend was like, hey, meet my friend, John. And I was, he has a distinct voice and I was telling him like, oh, you should do voice acting. There's good money in that. And then I'm like, oh, who is this, by the way? And it was the CEO of at and <laughs> <laughs> he, he makes $50 million a year oh or like whatever God. it is. And, and he was just kind of like, who, who let this kid? Anyway, I've already talked about this. Yo, I, I met a rich motherfucker at that Jay-Z and Beyonce party. Listen to this shit. Stop talking. And oh, he's no, about no, no, Jay-Z no, 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 and no, no, Beyonce. I've met her for 30 it. seconds. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to stop right now. <laughs> oh, I, you don't have to be kidding, Sam. I'm not going to stop. My dad's studio. I'll take the cameras off. <laughs> how rich this guy is white dude wearing a suit at the party so uh, sorry at the concert okay so I was like kind of walking around slow suit I thought, at concerts is a, is a, I almost thought he was a, flex. a security right. guy because he was just so you know. buttoned up yeah so then I saw him dancing and stuff and I was like <laughs> he's like yeah my boy told me to wear this I I was like, oh, you don't work here. And he was like, no. I was like, oh, my bad. Blah, blah, blah. Boom. We go to the after party. I see him there. I was like, look at you with regular clothes on. And I was like, I really thought you worked at the museum. So he's laughing. He had a Miami Dolphins hat. Oh, God. And I was like, what do you do? And he's like, uh, I own the Dolphins. And <laughs> I own the Miami F1 team. Oh, my God. Was it a uh, Ross? La or some Tom? Maybe not not Danny owner. Fangirling over here. No, is that like the the owner's like this old white guy, something Ross? Or he something. wasn't that old. He was fun. Anyway, I'm going to have like one part, next week. Might be but I'm gonna tell y'all this: he had such a young like energy, yeah, yeah. and I loved me. Like obviously, you're the CEO <clears throat> of fucking the Dolphins, and you own F1 Miami. Yes, tight. To be that rich and be chill. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. That to me is dope as fuck. But I, That's cool. I think we talked about this on the podcast too. Here specifically, the coolest people I've met have been super rich. Like, DJ Drama was super nice and chill. His people were also very chill. Because also, it'd be the niggas that's with the famous niggas that's annoying sometimes, too. That's the right, one. right. And, and Entourage. The hangarons. Yeah, and, and Drama's people was chill, you know, accommodating, they're quiet. You know, some of these motherfuckers, they come in and, and even not even just here, in general, I don't want to. I got to know what that second date was. Oh, yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Uh, so August, I'm not bracket my brain. Like, sorry, August, Beyonce's more important. August 28th, 2009. So this stemmed from a uh, video on trial, but that's when Love Court launches. Oh, God. A hidden camera oh, dating God. show where Eddie is one of the jurors, where they would, two people would be on a date, and then I believe... Do you have footage? I believe, I mean, there, you can go on YouTube and look at, like, the... <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll throw something in, that's fine. And, uh... Here's okay. You tell me if this is right or wrong because I this was so 2000s messy. I loved every second of it. I believe the show was it was hidden camera mm -hmm. allegedly, sort of. Yeah, and the people would go on a date and then they would get arrested during the date and yeah. brought in to trial. Yeah, and you got and, and they would be <laughs> brought on trial. child. And whoever was worse at dating got arrested, and who was ever better at dating got a thousand dollars, right? And you're one of the jury members that decided, yes. Yeah, yeah. How do you get booked for shit like this? That I don't know. <laughs> you I can't don't send know. black people to jail. Did you ever have black people? Uh, no. <laughs> no, we did have some black people there. One of them was uh, turned out to be like an OnlyFans chick. So I heard. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so, what was your experience like on that show? It was good. It was. Uh, it was. Uh, you know, it's funny. How I, many jurors? Uh, four, I think. Yeah. And it was kind of like a spinoff of the show. And I remember the present CEO was like, this show's going to be big and never got renewed. But uh, <laughs> exactly. but it, it was classic. Canceled after 23 episodes. Yeah, canceled reshuffling. immediately. I, I, you know what I'm it is? That it, that's more of a testament to what the stuff you could get away with on TV back then. We said mm -hmm. some yeah. wild stuff. What you saying? Just like, <laughs> man, we're just like full of body shaming, full nah, like just ripping off It was problematic. People. It was yeah. problematic, problematic 100%. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. it was kind of like this thing where it's like, what? We're kidding, you know? And it's kind of what the internet is now. But Body shaming is something that like, I didn't even realize I do until people were like, you can't pat shame. And I was like, mm. we grew up, <laughs> we grew up doing that. Though. Oh, a thousand percent. Or Not taking with, it or accepting it. Right, with, right. Even without TV, like, oh, you black motherfucker. You know, you <laughs> <laughs> that's like, I just saw a video of this guy who he's like, yeah, I used to, I used to, this is a white guy. He's like, I used to say the hard R all the time in that's the 2000s. Crazy. That's crazy. Right. And everyone around him is like, what are you talking about? And it come to find out he was actually the, talking about the R word. Like, yes. Oh. Like, I the, saw and, that. And it's just like, that bro, was a great video. So one, yes, people were throwing that R word out 
all the time as if it wasn't problematic, but the fact that this dude kept saying, the I was saying the hard R, and everyone's like, stop Yo, talking, stop talking, stop talking, stop talking. After, like, flagrant, like, they say it so much, and I'm just like, like, they love saying that word. I know, who's, one who's that? Flagrant 2. It's, um, it's a comedy Oh, pod. yeah, yeah, yeah. Very um, famous. For all my Midwest moms who follow me out there, it's a very famous stand-up comedian. Midwest moms. Oh, because they're from that's, Minneapolis. That's my, my demographic is, like... Middle-aged white women. Why? Because I'm like a because a Your bunch of my content is teaching, uh, and or like just like stuff that happens in the classroom. The classroom shit's cool though. Yeah, I liked that clip about you talking about names and stuff like that. I love learning about the lives of teachers. It's like so crazy. Oh, Des- never calling a girl Desaria instead of Desiree. I could never be a teacher. <laughs> I used to, be, yeah, I used yeah. to talk to some teachers oh, back in the day. They, they need to beat some of them kids up. When the bus driver who was like, "Shut the fuck up!" I was yeah. like, "I actually- teachers have a lot of patience. Good immune systems." Great immune, great immune systems, <laughs> I guess. What's the closest you've gotten to cursing a kid out? No. You were just talking about fighting somebody last night. Well, go ahead. Uh, cursing a kid out? I mean, yeah. They, like, because it's not kids who are like, there's some kids who are like bad who it's just like, all right, they're misguided. But there are some kids who are purposely like bad, like being very, like guys who are like verbally like sexually harassing girls and stuff like that. And wow. you're what like- age? Like high school. Oh, uh, hell no. And so it, it, it is really tough when it's like, well, you're reprimanding them and trying to get them to stop, but they're not moving on regular rules. But if I were to actually like, you know, pull them, like, like physically pull them, that's a lawsuit. Right. So it's like this, but yeah, I mean. That must be hard to watch uh, with girls. So, yeah. And you're I, subbed. I don't know why I thought about kid, kid, like babies or something. No, no, it's no, no, no. like middle school, high school. But no, I, I <laughs> there's, I go, I t- mainly am at a school that's like by Watts that has What's that? Ooh, Watts. California like it's like a neighborhood there's like there's gang activity there and so there are kids at this school who bang. Great, but they are like low key about it because they're, actually, they're about they're that actually life. In this, yeah, yeah, doing but there are kids who are not about that life, but they think it's cool. So they like come in the classroom being like, oh, I rep this set. I rep. And I'm like, no, you don't. And so those are the kids that I'm like, you're just doing this just to like be obnoxious and annoying. Right. So a couple of those kids, I was like, I dare you to keep that same energy outside these walls. How, how, how extensive is the security there? Do you have got, <laughs> is it metal detectors going in the so school? Responsible. <laughs> nah. No? No, this school... <laughs> Actually, that's a very good question. <laughs> no, this school. <laughs> it sounds like the school is getting shot up. It's the rich, but my, like yeah, so butt fuck towns. Right. Think about that, it. That's what I've, we talk about this a lot. But I have a joke where it's like, I, whatever. It, white schools are the ones where the mass shootings are happening at. And my friend has a joke, Alex Holiday shout out, where he's like, if I, if a if it's a non-white school and someone's bringing a gun to school, it's to settle it'll be for one specific person. It's never just for <laughs> random right, right, people yeah, to yeah, catch. Yeah. But yeah. so we don't, we don't I don't really worry about it at the. Oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah, at the school. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But so it's, <laughs> it is. <laughs> that's a good point. Eddie, you would be a teacher that would. Lit- I feel like you'd be calling the principal's office non. I saw a gun get pulled on a guy's head once at my high school. Sorry. Yeah, I'm Toronto. Toronto. It's wrong. You grew up in like the city. I grew up inner city, a little Jamaica. Blip. Uh, <laughs> okay, talk about stuff you can't say anymore. If I don't bring up Beyonce, and you don't bring up Mr. Bacon. We're, we're, we're Matt Popo Row. But, uh, <laughs> but I grew up in Little Jamaica in Toronto. And, um, you know, the school I went to, uh, the intersection I went to is Akeel and Eglin. It was rated the third worst intersection in all of Canada. <laughs> Which is like the 130 <laughs> American. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, so it was like, uh, the, there was, they even built a police station close by. It was so bad. And yeah. uh, I remember one time uh, I was on uh, the front lawn. And uh, some guys are just like, one guy was just kind of just like circling, circling, circling. And my buddy goes, yo, we got to get out of here. I'm like, why? He pulled a gun out in the guy's face like that. And he goes, say it, say it again, like that. And I was like from here to where the camera is. Mm-hmm. And I was like, and I, everyone scattered. And then I saw, then I looked on my shoulder, I saw that guy run. And then I saw a handoff to another guy across the street. And then that guy ran and it was. What do you think uh, he said? I don't, I don't know. Yeah, well, yeah, I didn't stick around to find out. You're like, I'm my brother's out. had guns pulled out in his head twice at well, school. Or my dad, my brother, my, my brother used to used to used to rap. He used to be a, used to be a, his name was what was his name? Devious. That was his Devious. Rap, Devious. Oh, that sound like a rap name. White guy. My brother had cornrows. Oh, yeah. Man. Why do we make that noise just now? <laughs> oh, no, yeah. Whoa, that was like a reflex. My brother, my brother, he, he was an amateur boxer, and he he he's, is he darker or the same complexion as you? Uh, he's lighter, lighter. Yeah, wow. and my brother, fearless, bro. Uh huh. And I mean, like, first grade, like freshman year of high school, fight on the front lawn, first day. 
And I remember my br- they pulled my, my I was like hanging on a cafe or like a sort of like a place across the street where they're playing like they're playing pool or like you know, table soccer or whatever foosball. And some guy goes, "Yo, your brother's in a fight." I go, "Fight? What do you mean?" He's like, "He's on the fight in the front lawn." First day, my brother was a hothead, five six hothead, bro. Fight anybody? I looked. They pulled my brother off this guy, and the guy was like just blood on the ground like this. My brother's a little dude. And he would fight. Oh, water, water. oh shit! He'd fight anybody, anytime. And he used to amateur box, and he got he couldn't he couldn't get cleared because he had too many concussions. CT. Whoa! So my brother was like a hothead man, and he loved you know he just loved you know being a musician. He used to play guitar, but he rapped, and they would freestyle. He freestyle with one guy, and he's like me. He's quick. Yeah. And so he said something about some guy's family, and the guy pulled a gun at him right in his fa- right in his head like that while everyone's in the cipher like that. My, my it's happened to my brother twice. But dudes like that's that gotta be a good bar. If you and here's the thing about Canada: everyone says there. Canada's nice. I was but just here's thinking the, that too. But here's the thing: must have been good. Here's the thing: it's not easy to get a gun. So the guys that got it, right, are really fucked. Yeah, up. yeah, yeah. Because yeah, you got yeah. it's hard to get. You yeah. can't just willy nilly just walk away. Go, hey, I'll have a gun, please. No, <laughs> if you get a gun, oh, you are a nefarious Walmart. individual, yeah, 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 bro. It's yeah. hard to get. Yeah. So, damn, dude, so, everyone's nice, but the hard people are really bad. Yeah, but speaking of how easy it is to get guns, that is crazy about teaching out here because it is. I always think the Midwest is like, ah, people are just people. But I go back to Midwest and I walk through my mid, like hometown Walmart and there's just like a wall of guns. Yeah, yeah. same that you can when just, I go to Florida. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But in right. LA, like it is. I saw a gun be shot like a month ago in my new apartment. I was like on the balcony. Don't you live in Echo Park? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and I saw these motherfuckers arguing. Are you here? Wait, real quick. Can I just say how Danny's not around guns? Like I said, I saw a gun be shot. <laughs> 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 Sound like a innocent bystander. I'm nervous. The only uh-huh. on the couch that owns a gun. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I was at, I was like by my window and I heard people arguing. And literally, this kid, they were like, he was like chasing the kid around the corner and shot the fucking gun and rode off on his bike. And I'm like waiting for the ambulance to come. No one came. I'm like, I'm not saying shit. Wow. <laughs> and, and no one, I'm no sorry. one died. You know, no one no died. got hit. He was just. Did I tell you when it's I was so at? Crazy. Did I tell you I was on the front, the front uh, patio of the comedy store and some guy died? He got shot in front of me. I thought you told Whoa. me. Whoa. Yeah. So I'm in the comedy store. Me and a buddy were just hanging on the front patio. Um, for all those listening comedy stores, one of the iconic cl- clubs in, in all of America. And there's just a hangout. And we're just hanging out. And some guy went outside to check his phone on Monday night. And I'm at the bar probably where we're sitting and where the guy was standing was where that TV was. And some guy went down the driveway. I looked over. I just looked over just by chance. He went in front of him and shot him. Just bra, 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 and then ran away. Well, don't and, do the Jamaican accent. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> And stop doing that <laughs> for real, dog. <laughs> Don't do that. Uh, 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 he's from Minnesota. He doesn't get it. But, uh, <laughs> but Wait, isn't it mini- Minneapolis? Mi- Minnesota. Yeah. But anyway, a uh, big Somalian community. One of the big biggest, Somali biggest community. in America. Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, that's yeah. where they recruited that uh, movie with Tom Hanks. What was it? No. Um, uh, yeah, I'm the captain now. Yeah, they were, they got them all out of Minnesota. Yeah. Uh, but Is anyway, really? yeah, yeah. It yeah. just went. To- no, right. seriously, that guy okay, was the uh, first that- accent. Now saying all of them. <laughs> this is getting out of hand, guys. <laughs> anyway, this is really a tragic story. But anyway, he so shot. He shot. He, so he. So when you're that close to a gun, you forget there's a scent, there's smoke, there's yeah, a smell, yeah, there's, there's like, fire. A, there's, like, like a, there's a there's, and people are crying on the ground. My buddy was like, "What the fuck?" And we, the guy, I saw a friend of mine hold this guy. Call the cops. Call, and the guy was like bleeding out. And I was like, "My God!" I never went back to the commissary for a year. Yeah, yeah, it's traumatic. It's very traumatic. Yeah. Was wow. it a was it a comic that got shot or like a just a person who happened to be there? Uh, someone was settling a beef. They uh, they were there on a Monday. He walked out and apparently just shot. Him. Never caught the guy. Oof. And the guy died. Yeah. I've they, never seen someone get shot. I've just been around it because I used to go to like a lot of the. Wow, we're bringing up Jamaican a lot. All the Jamaican clubs. Mm-hmm. That five a.m. six a.m. shit mm. is always happening. Mm-hmm. Actually, there was a guy, there was a security guard that got shot, and he's so fucking hot that all the girls would still fuck him, <laughs> even though he had no legs anymore. What? He had no and legs. I remember one of the funniest things that <laughs> happened online was, and Mandy and I were laughing about it because we both remembered, a girl he was dating starts arguing with another girl he was dating. And like on MySpace or some shit, she was like, bitch, that's why I had your man crawling up my stairs. Oh, oh my, my God. God. Like, that's hilarious. You got to have really good dick for me to fuck you and you ain't got no more legs. In the wheelchair, <laughs> that's crazy. Dropping it, it off. Crazy. Oh. You, you only anyway, I don't know how we got on this topic about guns, but uh, anyway. It's, the glove court it's, was a wild time. It's, 
<laughs> Call back. Call Dude, back. Shout out from, you know, the third most dangerous intersection in Canada. Thank to, you. Uh, thank you. To, thank what is you. it? Much music? Yeah, yeah. Sirens were my lullaby. <laughs> what is it? So, I don't know. Is it a song or something? <laughs> Dude, it is funny. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> yeah, my neighbor. This, yeah. this did just remind me, like, talking about teaching in the bad schools, because I used to teach in, like, a super rich school where kids would grow up in, or kids would pull up in, like, Lamborghinis. Really? And That's crazy. my friend who listens to the pod, shout out Dylan, he sent me, hey, if you ever need more material, uh, I guess I won't say the specific area just in case it gets him in trouble. This is in the Midwest, in, like, an affluent area of the Midwest. And he got, he got in trouble, um... And, like, the parents tried to, like, say, like, file, like, a claim that he was bullying their child because he because he called their daughter rich. And that's <laughs> oh all he did. God. And she lives in a almost $3 million home and pays over $60,000 a year to go to high school. And so I the parents the parents said he was bullying because he called her rich. And I've learned there's nothing rich people hate more than being called rich. Or nepotism. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Let me tell you something. If I'm ever, when I am successful and my kids are benefiting from my success, I wish these niggas would not claim nepotism. Like, I, I are, like if you, you say you have a old black parents that fought hard for civil rights and shit like that. Mm -hmm. Nigga, every moment you have oh, yeah. to be, be But thankful, that's honorable. Right. But even, but say your parent, your daddy was, uh, you know, started fucking podcasting. If the nigga helped you get to where you're at, uh, I don't understand why people don't take pride in that. Of I like, think because my, you my feel parent like you don't helped. have a, one of my really good friends. I, it's, I just talked about her in an episode yeah. with um, a few hours ago, whatever. Anyway, Liz Goldwyn's family is super rich, like Hollywood royalty. Yeah. Her, mm -hmm. her, her brother's Tony Goldwyn. He was like the president of Scandal, famous actor. But she was telling me about her dad. I went to visit her in Hawaii. And she was telling me, like, yeah, her, her dad made the movie Mystic Pizza. She was like, yeah, my father, like, broke Julia Roberts. Oh, wow. I was like, damn, because we were watching Notting Hill together. Right. Uh -huh. But she does not like, – I knew her for four years before I knew that about her family. Right, right. And when I got to her house, I was like, damn, bitch. Like, right. But it was all her own money still. And she yeah. was like, you know, I – even when she has articles come out about her, she's like, I don't like them bringing up my family. I think that people must feel like – they haven't accomplished something on their own or they have no identity if we fall back. Everyone hates someone with yeah. a head start. Everybody. Yeah. It's weird. Like, and, and there's obviously problematic where it's just like Bill Simmons, the head of The Ringer, like just gave his like 13-year-old daughter a podcast at one point and like it was just like kind of nonsense. And it's like there are people who are like actual journalists that could have like mm -hmm. filled this for pop culture what or whatever. What podcast about? Uh, I don't know. Like something random. Or maybe he was going to give her one and then it got backlash because they're like actual pop culture journalists, whatever it is. Dude, but then there's Kenya uh, Barris's daughter has a regular job and I was like, why? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like he'd hire her in a second. I think he yeah, would. Right. But like, I just, there's that side of nepotism, but there's the other side where it's like we all have, like my dad worked in the food service or works in the food service industry. So like my first job interview was, yeah, somebody, like, it was a food service, like, a good sales job. I just don't think job, everyone like, should have to get it out of the mud. Maybe because I'm a black person, I just feel like we just have so much work to do to get ahead. Mm -hmm. if, if I had a little bit of... Amen, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I almost dapped you up, too. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Black man. I do agree, though. I, you know? feel, I feel like we acknowledge, like, that's what I really like about Drake, as fucked up as it is. I love that Drake doesn't have to put on the dance and show for us about how, like, he was struggling, or how he's so yeah. gangster. Like, I think that part is kind of cool. Right. But I, I I, agree, especially with black people. It's like, you got to hear this rough, tough story. Yeah, yeah. it's traumatic a little bit. Like, you know? I, this is so fucked up. Oh, my God. I was uh, eating Midtown, which I'm not a Midtown girl in New York. Saw this dude that I recognized. I was like, what you doing over here? And he was like, my mama lived over here. I said, excuse me, getting money. He's like, I grew up over here. And I was like, mm. oh, where like Manhattan and he's like Central Park West is where I grew up Wow! and like gave me this kind of look and I realized he was like probably tired of telling people like mm -hmm. yes I had money growing up mm -hmm. right. and yeah I want my kids to say the same shit right 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 exactly right yeah Beyonce my god mama you know what I'm saying like I want right. yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> it all comes back to Beyonce mama well, speaking of People being successful. Let me give you this last date Wheezy this is a very recent one February 9th 2023 Wow. It's this year, yeah. Mm. Mm, mm. Wait, how much time do I have? The, I mean, I, well, you can tap out whenever. You don't actually have to guess. <laughs> but if it's fun for you, go for it. I got, 
I'm like, what? Did can she call I, her the Adidas thing? Can she call her yes, assistant? Yes, it is the Adidas thing. <laughs> so, what can she watch? So, can she call her assistant? <laughs> <laughs> right. February 9th, 2023, the launch of Interlace, Adidas original series that Weezy is now the host of. Very cool. I mean, I'm not a host, but. Well, that's what it says online. You're mad humble. So. You know what? You're mad humble. She yeah. doesn't tell her friends and stuff. It comes out. I think that's the way to go. You're doing everything the right way. I Even the studio, I found out when you were told everybody, when right. you put on online. But I mean, oh, to, yeah, my co host got married. Mandy was actually very mad at me that uh, you started I, it. N- not that I started it, but like in New York, she was like, why wouldn't you say anything to me? And I'm like, and I think Andrew Schultz might have felt the same way too with Alex. Like, why did they keep it the secret? And Alex and I come from this world of like, we really wanted to make something and surprise everybody we knew. Yeah. I had always felt like I was working for people that were bigger than me, still am. You know what I'm saying? He worked for someone like, it's our time and I don't want to just be like oh we're about to do this we're about to do this fucking do it no I, yeah. I find that refreshing yeah. because we live in a time now where every fucking paint paint stroke on a wall is being documented like uh, just just got yeah. the new chairs yes. just got the cameras just got the meet Danny our engineer do this like bro yes. just do it yes because things can fall apart like that like yes. I hate that it's not like when you're when people deal with their homes, like I kind of get, but like a business, like come on, bro. I know, bro. It is, you know how hard it was tiresome. when we were building that studio out. Like it was yeah. so exciting. We got the keys to this Soho yeah. place. Like it felt good, but like, and Alex. To be fair, I remember one day I was I posted something at Home Depot, and he was like, "Take it off." He's like, "No one should even think you're fucking making a shelf in your house." We're going to drop this shit, and everybody's going to be so surprised. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the way it's to do more it. Impressive that. Way. I think so too, and I think I think even from a algorithm standpoint, you get a a hit. We're like, whoa, what is this? That's great. That yeah. even even like digitally, it's a good thing to do. But like, I think I just think I hate I, I, I this generation documents every single minute moment of some accomplishment that hasn't happened yet. Just let it happen. It is such a weird thing because I was listening to Flagrant and it had Casey Neistat on. And he's you know. Documented. He I is like one of the funniest people. Yeah. In my life. Very ugly, but. <laughs> <laughs> but God yeah, bless. Prolific. Yeah, yeah, pro, so prolific I don't as know a YouTuber. Yeah, exactly. Right. But he's, he's a vlogs like, he was like vlogging daily at some point his life in New York. And it's like the opposite of what you're saying, but I feel like, for one, that was a time ago. But I do feel like there is a value in just producing a thing versus producing the process of every single thing. That's it. You know, because it, it we're it, so used to sharing every moment, right? And it's like it's, it's, it becomes not <laughs> as fulfilling because okay, this is a little marginal change. Okay, nigga, when are you gonna actually build the the light? Okay, yeah. Versus oh, we we here. This is fire. Someone I'll, told me they didn't believe I was on vacation because I hadn't posted it. There you go. See, there you go. And I'm right. like, why does it have to be? Yeah, it's, it's an interesting. <laughs> like, don't thing. get me wrong, I post, but I you think I'm not on a plane because I didn't post it? Like what? Yeah, yeah, and it's also exhausting feeling the need to like, yeah, I agree. like I, like that's how I've built my audience is like reels and TikTok or whatever, and it's a necessary evil in comedy these days. But also like I'm going through like family emergency stuff, so I'm back in Minneapolis, like hanging out in the hospital or whatever, yeah. and I hate that there's even in half a percent of my brain powers in the back of my mind like. Do I have to like post something? You can't feel do guilty I, because I, that's your job. Yeah. yeah, bro. Some some posts are the cringe is like through the roof. Like I remember one time someone, but you can disagree with me, but someone said my grandma passed away and they just held the grandma's oh. dead hand in the bed. Oh, I hate picture. that. I I'm like, that. bro, what are you doing? Yeah, it Jeez. seems dishonoring to the grandma at it's, that point. I just feels like her. like listen, we live in a time where people want likes and views and whatever, but you got to cut something off or like. Is this what can make you happy? Like, oh, this got a lot of likes. They must they feel yeah. bad for me. Just tell your friends and that's and, it. Right. And Not we've all content. been through mm-hmm. shit too. And I feel like, you know, as you said, like my, you know, my dad uh, goes through health stuff. I'm sure everyone's got yeah. their shit. But you think about it almost when you're really in those moments and you're trying to cherish oh, yeah. those moments. And then if you wor- take yourself out for a second, imagine if you spent those fucking moments on Instagram. Uh, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Like, I, yeah, my grandmother passed during COVID. I didn't post it about it. And I... Part of me felt bad about it. I'm like, no, these niggas don't even know my grandmama's name. Yeah. You know, so for me to post that and like to share it with these strangers that really can't give me any relief or or a sense of like warmth, you know, on, Ooh, on I this might app. Be. So my grandmother died from COVID last year. Okay. But when I posted, it was a few days later, but I remember sharing a bunch of videos and stuff that yeah, I yeah. liked of her. And I felt both of those things. I yeah. was like, why am I going to share this thing? But also like... 
Oh, I remember. You want to honor her, though. But I posted my grandma a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Like, I would just sometimes videotape my grandma, and I'd be like, dick. And she'd be like, well, would you stop? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? No. But, like, I think it's a weird thing of, is sharing my life endearing and helping other people? Yeah. Because right. when people yeah, yeah, post yeah. Their, their grandmothers, right. even though I've lost mine, I kind of like seeing an old black grandma that gets mad at everything. There's a balance. There's always a balance. Yeah. Yeah. As long as it's, there's, it comes from a sincere place where, like, I think my grandma's funny enough, but he goes, oh, this will get likes. Like, uh, oh, because they yeah, do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, took the, I took it to the extreme of not posing her at all. Cause it was, I felt very sensitive about it, but the weirdo like you know her la her hands cold and you're taking a picture. That's disgusting. dude, that's wild. You know <laughs> how do you feel about <laughs> posting? Your, how do you feel about significant others and stuff like that? I, I would have list hosting your significant other. Do you feel like for me from from a comedy standpoint, my girlfriend's like in the oh. in the tech world. She's doesn't she she's her last post was 2019. Ooh. She doesn't need to be. She doesn't like being out there like that. Yeah. And I don't. Want people to be like message you like, hey, your buddy, your your boyfriend's funny. You never want to post a picture of her ever, even if I, I feel like I feel like I made a personal choice and said this this is strictly for content to make people happy, whatever. Mm -hmm. Post my dog, post comedy shows, whatever. I don't like some things. Got to be just for me. Yeah, I, re I respect yeah. that. I respect things, that. Wow. She doesn't. She didn't ask to be in all these posts. Like I don't need to put her through that. Mm. So, so I yeah, I do post my wife, but I I feel like it was. One, she like doesn't care and thinks it's funny, and like there are people who legitimately are like, we don't care about you at all. Post your wife, like we love. Yeah, and so right. like I don't ever want it to be a content thing. But what I like, I used to like, it's her birthday, and like put a picture post up and be like, happy birthday, I love you. And then all of a sudden I got all these followers, and I'm like, a picture, not a real. That's not gonna be good for the algorithm. And I'm like, bro, what? Who? Get That's it. where I was like, even though this is for entertainment, like I still want to be able to live my life. So let me, yeah, on her birthday, I'm still going to post a picture like of us together on so our vacation. I don't wanna, I, she didn't ask to be publicly judged either. At what point yeah. do you post you know I mean? a yeah. dude? That's or, not fair. Have you ever posted right. a dude? Never posted a dude. Posted my ex-girlfriend. Only felt like it was easy to post her because we had been friends yeah, okay. in right. high school. Um, I think I'm going to post a dude when I get engaged or married. Yeah. But like I've posted uh, like – if I'm having a funny moment on vacation or something, I remember once my ex was arguing with like a cab driver. Like I wasn't trying to hide him. It was like a side of shit that's like a little that. different than just like you know you guys on a beach holding hands, being like with my you know significant other, whatever. Oh, like, like a hard what do they call it? A hard, hard launch. launch versus soft launch. Yeah, yeah. I but wish I, I could. Could. it is. I haven't had a man in so long. Yeah, it She's makes sense. And, uh, uh, she doesn't need that insecurity. Being like you know people are like uh, like saying stuff or what are they like I don't know. Yeah, so I don't know what else to do. That's fair. Like, I'm just well, oh, the industry. I don't know. I just want to be. I just <laughs> no, 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 that's sad. I just, just want to post. <laughs> I know. I just want the single side. Right. Yeah. I just want to post funny thing? stuff and promote stuff, <laughs> right. and that's it. That's all I want to do. That's fair. Yeah, I respect that. I'm not gonna front. If I could get a boyfriend tomorrow, and I know this sounds oh. super desperate, but I'm just gonna be honest. I've felt like my career has held me back so much from family and kids. If I could have. All of that tomorrow, I would delete everything. Wow, really? Mm -hmm. But you, but you live this life damn near to the max, so I can understand that. Like yeah, I just yeah. don't. For well, me, yeah. I post because I'm bored. I post stories because I'm having fun. But like, yeah, yeah. When I'm on dates and shit, like, yeah, I will go. I'm, I don't need it. Right. I actually le lost my left my phone recently in Santa Monica somewhere, and he was like, "How you're always on your phone?" I'm like, "Yeah, but not when I'm with you." What if you met a guy that was like you were really into you, yeah, you cared for, and he just said, "Just don't bring me up on the podcast. I don't want my personal life out there." I've already you, dated you, that. You could you could do that. Yeah, I've dated someone. Um, okay. Shit, recently I don't talk about this because your audience does thrive on knowing you in every way. That actually has been the most difficult thing about dating this new person. Right. Because like. You know. I have no sex stories to give y'all. Right. But, you know, that's just what they prefer. Right. So. right. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Eddie. <No. laughs> yeah. Wow, right. we have to right. off the line after right. that shade. Crazy. <laughs> um, are we uh, all the facts? Yeah, I, don't, I mean, if we got time, I just didn't know real quick on that last date if, okay. if you got time for it. I, I know because for me, sometimes it doesn't – You. People try to trivialize, trivialize stuff. So like you have, Weezy had such like a successful career where you don't really need to prove anything to anybody. But like was the Adidas, I mean, that is like one of the most recognizable brands in the world. Was it validating for you or was it already just like, yeah, I've already in this space anyway. Um, like getting a deal with a, being a host, being a brand choosing you I to represent them. I couldn't believe it, but I'm gonna be honest with you. It actually, it's validating and not at the same time. 
Uh, like Mandy was just saying, Nissan hosted iHeartRadio's Black Effect podcast, right? Mm -hmm. Or sorry, sponsored. And I guess they ran in, some of the people that work for Nissan ran into Mandy. It was like, we would love to work with you, but we can't because of the name of your show. We love horrible decisions. Mm -hmm. I've heard that so many times that my page, my branding, I have a friend of mine that wanted to give me some Apple thing that couldn't because of my content. So when Adidas did, I was shocked. Right. Come to find out the person who hired me, a black woman that loves horrible decisions. Right. I was like, I don't care. You're part of the culture. Like we have to, you know, unlearn that, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> I think as time goes on maybe, but mm -hmm. it felt like a win, but it didn't. Do you ever have imposter syndrome where you're like, why me? You're about me. You ever have those moments? No, because I know that I'm here to like, I, I really believe my purpose and I is to enrich the lives of black people, hire black people, get them more money. Like I really believe that's what I'm supposed to do and I keep doing it. Right. So no, like with this a humble drama confidence show, will get you th everywhere. You know? 35 black people got hired on that. Wow. Day oh, wow. In For eight episodes. And I remember... Um, no offense, Sam. I remember the day we had to get a white DP. And I was like, Boo. Ah, God damn it. I was losing <laughs> my mind. You thought tell me where to go. It wasn't <laughs> offensive until you said no offense, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But I, I had to call it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I thought about that and I was like, I really, like, I'll go above and beyond. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? And yeah. like, I think that it's happening to me because I'm doing that. And I've seen people that I'm, I'm fond of do the same thing for their teams mm -hmm. and yeah. people they love. So, very cool. Yeah. I I I not I don't get imposter syndrome. You know what I do get it with dating. Yeah, right. Why me? Like I feel like the or maybe not the opposite. Like more of the oh, of course it's not me because I'm X Y Z. I'm not gonna have someone because right, I'm this right, right. type thing. Right. That is a weird. Yeah, get in. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, no go ahead. Just getting into the dating pool. I'm just like, what? I feel like a lot of men out here are, we're like in a weird place of like insecurity slash not yet knowing who we are. A lot of us, whether it be because our jobs and we didn't, weren't forced to like really look in, inward of who, you know, maybe you're an athlete and you're just like, I've been treated, taken care of my whole life. So I don't, I never had to like really do, or I'm an actor and I'm a famous actor. I barely know. Yeah. How, I don't even have control of my calendar. Everyone's tending to me. And, uh, it is weird. I don't know, me being 30 and single now, I guess. I'm just in my own, like, damn, bro, like, what type of chick do I like? I, th I think you're in a different situation because you were you were married. Right, right. And so it's I not like you were yeah. like, you know, like in and out, in and out in your 20s. You're, yeah, you're I feel like I know a lot about Yeah, but myself. now you got to think of, well, I was with this type of person, now right. what? And you know that shit and didn't work. you don't want to go for the same Exactly. Type. And you're just like, you know, but the type of chick that I liked back then is where I'm to where you're getting back to what you're saying is very different than who I would fuck with now. Do you have a type, Eddie? Thick black. No, I'm just mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Thick Jamaican. black braids. Jamaican. <laughs> Jamaican. 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 Jamaican would not Jamaican. shock me. Jamaican. Oh, God. Just, if not for the food alone. Just some curry goat and some oxtail and have a good time. No, I uh, I don't have a type. <laughs> I think I think at the end of the day, it's like I've dated a, a barrage of different from a Hispanic, I've had uh, you know just like black, white, white everything. Uh, I also I also was single during a time when dating apps first came out. Yeah, 2014 Tinder yeah. was the only thing. Yeah, yeah. that was a different time. I was fuck. I missed that. I, that I was did. a different time. You probably saw your friends be like, "What are you doing?" I missed yeah, that way. I've yeah, never yeah. been on a dating app. Oh, <laughs> you are so. It was a it was a different <laughs> time because everything wasn't compartmentalized. <laughs> it, it was, was just we're fun. all in the same pool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't there was no Raya. There was no like you know all these other. Oh, uh, it was only know, one or two. One thing. And we're all it. in the same I one. I fucked some famous house DJ, and at the time I had remembered like on Tinder he had his regular name, so I get to his hotel room and I was like, damn, this shit's nice as fuck. And then I was like thinking like, why are you in town? I saw Governor's Ball was that weekend. I was like, and he didn't drink. He's like, oh, yeah, if you'd like to take some of the champagne out of my room, you can have it. And I was like, <laughs> but I just remember laughing about it. Like, Tinder was so free for all. It was exciting and there was no danger. And no Instagram. He probably wasn't scared I'd record him. Yeah, yeah. there's no danger. There, there was no. Th I remember women hearing women talk about it, like being like, I want a, a Tinder date. Oh, wow. And this is yeah. for you, <laughs> is this New York crazy. or LA? This is LA. Okay. And people are like, oh my God, we're going on a Tinder date. Oh my God, really? Like, that's cool like now it's kind of like Ugh, i'm on Dude, this I think thing I again fucked maybe like 30 guys left in there yeah so and maybe you know, if i if 45 are under my belt 30 were from time. damn i'm like scared of that shit yeah I'm no sorry. i'm very old school uh i don't you, know Lucy. how i don't have yeah i i, I think i uh, i think you're in a good time though because i think uh I'm, people have gone through the ringer with dating apps i mean like uh, they want a genuine good person and i think you can i think you're a great guy and i think you'll be i, I don't Some think I, I don't think i don't think you're gonna be like you know i think if 
and what I learned from being single is being upfront is the best thing to ever be. Like I'm looking, not looking for anything sp- uh, serious or you know whatever. Yeah, yeah. I just yes. got out of this. But the more upfront you are, the better. Work. That just, I do doesn't not work. Like, I do not like it lying to, to anybody. I'm, every man I've ever dated says that. I don't want to lie to anybody. It doesn't work. In a, I Never have I met a man, even the ones that I've ended up, I ended up with, that were looking for something. Right. I guess what I'm saying is being upfront. If you're a good person, like you are fucking good, you hang out, you're you're nice to hang out with. Whatever you say doesn't matter because oh you're they want to keep talking to you because you're a good hang. If you're a dick but you got a f- two foot long dick, it's like I'm gonna just fuck you, but you're an evil person. I've looked at women dead you know in the face and been like, I got out of something really serious. It was toxic and not good. I'm just and it doesn't hang with someone matter. I like and have a good time. And I've had women say like, not for me, sorry. And it could have been something great, but I'd rather not be a liar. When be like, you know, she's out there. Maybe you know. I say those things and it's never worked. Like, all right, I believe you, dog. I'll leave you alone. It's always like. Okay, but let's talk all day. Right. Anyways, um, we being so dang desirable. God, not okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> I know, but said dating. You're is, married though, right? Dating world. Yeah, oh, yeah. married like five, six years. Oh, that's great. Um, all right, last segment we do every uh, we essentially call on your shot. So if you don't want to just ask like, what's next for you, but more so, what is what's the thing that you can look back at, like a message in a bottle that you can say, oh, this is the thing that I'm going to do. And it's going to be cool, and I can look at it as a cool like memory for myself. You go. Oh, I don't know. Say some. Say fucking. Like what do you mean, Eddie? Like what do you mean? Like, like do I have those moments where I'm? I do have those moments. Not to sound cliche, where I'm like, I live in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm a working comedian. I have a beautiful girlfriend. I have a nice place. I have a great career. A career that I would have thought before immigrating here that it was impossible. Yeah. You know, and I think that like. you know, I do have an immigrant mentality, even though I don't, you know, I have parents that m- move from poor places. And I'd, I never once, I don't think I could, I ever complained about it. And that kept me going. So there's, you know, because I can't, you can't look an immigrant dad in the face and be like, LA is hard. Fact. Yeah. Sure. He's like, really? You speak the language and you have a discernible skill. <laughs> yeah. And you have money in the bank. Or yeah. like, or you at least have access to money, a credit card. Yeah. It, it can't be hard. I always had that in the back of my mind. So there are moments where I'm driving around being like, this is what I wanted. And the beautiful thing is there's a difference between being uh, uh, satisfied and difference between being like like happy, I guess. Like I'm not, I'm not plateau. I'm not like, I'm not like, oh, this is it. I'm like, this is it. This is great. But there's more to come. So uh, there's moments. I think we we'll all have those moments. You're like, yo, this is, there's palm trees. It's December. It's, this feel, I'm living my dream. That's funny. I have that in New York. But you know, it, it's, ooh, this is, sounds a little elitist. I have those moments in New York when I'm alone, eating expensively or shopping expensively, mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh, fuck yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, I yeah, watched yeah. Sex in the City, and that was my dream, and like, that's me. And I got more money than Carrie did. Carrie was broke as shit. Right. She was dressed well. Yeah. She was like, but like, I remember I had it eating recently at that French restaurant I always go to, Lucienne. I was like, damn. Yeah. Just ordered a $50 steak. I've thought about when I had to like eat ramen and wait yeah. and like just go out to eat with guys so I could eat well. Like mm-hmm. I remember those moments and that feels yeah. good to know in my thirties. I'm all right. Wow. But I think message in the bottle for me is um, one thing that is severely missing from my life. My parents live in Orlando. I'm working to move them here. Mm. Oh, that's, wow. That's what me will be the pinnacle of what I can do. Oh. Cause I've helped so many other people that aren't family and my mom's seventies, my dad's eighties. I'm only in my thirties. So it's like, I want to spend, I hate being morbid, but like, I want them to spend their final years with me. 100%. Right. Of course. Spend that time with them while you can. That's yeah. huge. To that you, both sure. of y'all's point, because y'all are more advanced than I am, I'm in this like every day is a fucking uh, a step. And it's like I'm grinding. And I think even to it's pretty, specifically what you're saying, Eddie, is that when you can get to a point where you can just l- take a deep breath, it's like a massive win. Yeah, we talked about this on our pod a bunch of times too. Yeah. Like taking a deep breath, that's it. Because there's so much you're not you're just holding your breath. Like, oh, the rent I got two hundred dollars over rent. Okay, cool. Now I got to make this two hundred dollars last for yep. three weeks, and then it's you know. I had a moment recently where I, like I bought a jacket, and not this is flex at all, but like obviously I know where I was, but I never looked at the price. I just gave my yeah. card and whatever. And I walked out like normally I'd be sizing that up big yeah. time. Like oh man, I got to fucking. That's know, a good feeling. You know, and it was like the jacket was like maybe one hundred and fifty bucks, but I didn't look. And I was mm-hmm. like. I'm okay. You know, those are nice moments. Yeah. I'm not at the Louis Vuitton store just 
ring it up. No, because we all know when we didn't do that. Right. Of course. Yeah. You know of course. Like, I used to do that for every, I used to do it for fucking fast food meals. Like, fuck, okay, here we bruh, go. 100%. I remember going off. Shake Shack. I can't do Shake yeah, Shack. I, I can do Carl's Jr. Dollar <laughs> yeah. it, why the, it ain't a motherfucking dollar. Yeah, dollar 25. They yeah. just gave me the meal for free. And I knew that bitch. Was I, have a, I have a thing where I said to myself, you know, when I moved here, I was negative. Like, uh, I always say to myself, if you're down 10 grand, you're up 10 grand, you live the same life. Either you're worried about losing it or you're worried about getting deeper. So just live your life with your up 10 grand or down 10 grand. Just keep going in the middle and then eventually you start veering off to... We just never know. Like... Hustle. Just keep going. I don't know. Life is... Everybody... It seems like life is long, but it's kind of not. It's like those little moments of... You know what I mean? Like today, at the end of today, I don't know. You're going to maybe think about having a drink tonight. Maybe you're going to do a show. Like whatever it is. It's just like, should I? But we're always so worried about tomorrow. And like, I just... No. Yeah. Got to enjoy the day. It's very crazy. Thank y'all for for doing this. It was um, fun. Literally, you know, literally. Not, we've never sat down with another podcast. I, yeah, that's true. I yeah. feel honored. We only have one guest. Yeah, Charlemagne, Charlemagne right? was the only guest. Yeah. Charlemagne. Damn, I'm that's I'm the that. next Charlemagne. The <laughs> first guest in the one year anniversary. Um, oh, yeah. So that's crazy, true. dude. Oh, what? Yeah. I was just speaking facts about their podcast because I actually do research. Oh, so I, yeah. I just, I was coming for the vibe. He produces and does everything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just do the one thing. <laughs> no, but on the last note, and I really appreciate you, Izzy. I feel like, I did, first of all, I thought you were, you know, you meet people that are, that are doing well for a long time. You think that they're older. Not to say that you look or seem older. But as an inspiration, just to, to know that, oh, this person's not that much older than me, but they've done so much in this space. And, Hired people and just... I know what you mean about older. You know what I'm saying? Just you, I really appreciate Experience. it. Yeah, Experience. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Danny, I'm telling you. I appreciate it. We should you. put a note in our phones. You will probably hire someone at Springs Hill to work alongside or with you, like, shortly. Like, it happens so quick where you just turn into this position of power and you don't even know you have power. <clears throat> Shit, I might need something from you. <laughs> like, I'm not even joking. You know what? You always, that's how you always got to be careful how you treat people. Right, facts. You may be producing something for Spring Hill, and I might be like, yo, I really want to take this show to da 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 You just never fucking know. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm always trying to be as kind as I can, because, like, yeah. someone's going to remember it. And a lot of people don't give a fuck about being kind. That's, no. like, a big thing, and it's it's insane. Uh, Eddie and I have bonded over that about yeah. um, po- being podcast co-hosts and, like, yeah. you know, or um, when something happens or giving leeway, like, mm-hmm. be good to each other. Oh, wait. All right, rest in peace to Jerry Springer. Take care of yourself. Oh, oh, yeah. Wait, can I, can I just say real quick on that? Take care Our yourself. last guest that we had, I he performed for Jerry Springer at an improv show and, like, played Jerry Springer to Jerry Springer. Oh, yeah. And I brought it up. And right after the news announces that Jerry Springer died, he texts me. He's like, you killed Jerry Springer. Oh. I was like, what? He's like, you brought it up like on the podcast week. and now he died. It's your fault. I knew I got blamed for on. Jerry Springer's death. That is, so, how did he die? Uh, he wasn't even that old. 79? 70. I knew a guy that was on Jerry Springer too. Jerry, was he? Was he, he was also former, was on Jerry Springer. Jerry Springer's Mary Cincinnati as well. Yeah. No. Nope. Oh, yeah, Mary Cincinnati, yeah. Hail um, to the and Yeah, Eddie, thank you for doing this too. You're a great person. You've well, been helpful. No problem, buddy. No and problem. You are You booked me on totally twice. Two times. Yeah, we sat down. You know, I feel like, you know, uh, I, I know the position you're in where you're like, you got out of something personally and you're in this whole new landscape of LA. And I always feel like, and I, even when I had that conversation with you on the phone, I'm not this grand like uh, podcaster uh, sort of comedian, but I've, I, w- I remember there was times when there were, I sat down with a guy who was older and he would never give me any kind of... He was just, no, oh, you'll figure it out. Block. You'll, fi- you'll yeah, figure yeah. it out. There's I'm so like, much hey, value in that shit. Just. Oh, yeah. And just like, it also drives you too. Where you're like, you know, just go out there, tell the joke. I remember I told you like, nothing will save you more than jokes. Being a comedian, entertainer, it's so impressive, it's hard to do. And you focus on that, everything will come together. I feel oh, like... That shit is hard as fuck. It's a hard thing to do. And it's even in podcasts too. Like, the conversation will, will take you f- place you never dreamed of. Mm-hmm. You're, buying, you're buying homes because of you're a good conversation with somebody. That's so fucking nuts. Isn't it No, nuts? I'm not. It's because I've been sucking dick and I'm telling about it. Yes, yes. Either way, your mouth is working, but... Uh, uh, this dick sucker <laughs> got you a talking. <laughs> Any That's hole. a way to end that motherfucking yeah. crossover. Thank you, Sam and Danny. Yay. Thank you guys for being here. Thanks for having me here, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye. <laughs>
that was a great episode. It's yeah, always great to hear. You know what's funny is, so those two, again, check out their podcast for fact's sake. I believe it's on Patreon. Horrible decisions. Um, too. Horrible deci- sh- decisions. What's nice is they are a podcasting duo themselves. There's multiple times where I was like, Okay, this is a great conversation, but I got to get back to the date. And Eddie is just already a host and has chemistry with Wheezy. He kind of just led the conversation. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're good. I mean, they're good. They're- himself and has insightful questions. I was telling them on the For Fact's Sake pod that we recorded before our collab episode um, that working here at WTF and working with Wheezy, like their her name holds a lot of weight in the space. And even people that don't necessarily know her by name or WTF by name, the connections that they have that have helped me in this working here. If people that don't know, I, I work here at WTF or where we record in LA. Uh, it goes a long way. It's a lot of clout, but clout in a good way in the sense that you have the experience. Um, and she's just like a professional, a conversation, like, like we were saying in the pod. Right. You be able to build a life off of conversations. Yeah. You can you can say it's, oh, they're talking about sex and fucking and all that stuff as much as you want, but she's really good at what she does. Right. And she's really good at turning it on and off, no matter what kind of hectic. I mean, she has like five legitimate jobs. That, that I mean, she, Kenya... Yeah. She has a show on Fuse. You didn't even mention that. She has a show on Fuse. Yeah, a network television show called um, Sex Cells. And for those of you that don't know Kenya Barris, shame on you, but that's the dude who created Blackish yeah. and is like, you know, yeah. he he's him. Yeah, one of the biggest, you know, uh, you people on Netflix, that was his movie. So she runs his podcast uh, department. And, you know, it can come in here, be right off of a call. We had a different time scheduled today because she had something else pop up. And so she's just such an inspiration and in in someone that I look at as like not only someone I work for but in a friend kind of way of like man you're just a dope successful creative person that I legit feel like looks out for not only me but all of the employees at WTF Right. and Eddie you know is someone like we said been around the block in multiple different cities and just know he has like a lot of good wisdom about LA, but just comedy in general that a lot of people don't want to give a lot of times. Right. Even like I'm about to shoot a 30 half hour, I think late summer, early fall. Stand up comedy, 30 minutes. Yes. And a lot of that refocusing of like, I need to get my time and my comedy better was from conversations with Eddie, me and Eddie just wrapping it up. And he said it on the pod, I think it's like jokes will get you far. Like jokes are the thing that gets you the yeah. farthest. Um, you get you get booked on TV, get booked on movies, you get all these things. A lot of times from your ability to tell of jokes on stage, because right. it's the yeah. it's it's the opposite of the lowest common denominator. It's it's the hardest thing to do. Right. I think what's impressive about them is yeah their humility. I think it's tough. I started doing comedy out here in LA, and sometimes it's. I mean, this is embarrassing, but it's hard for me not to try to like flex because I'm like, well, I need to let people know. Yeah. Like you know this. Like this big company just paid me a, a a nice little rent check for a corporate event, and they're sending an Escalade to pick me up. And I'm like, do I need to make content out of this? It's like, no, yeah, just like yeah, go yeah. do it. And I feel like Eddie, yeah, Eddie was on like a popular TV show in Canada. Justin Bieber know like watch the shows, know who he is for like over, for like almost a decade. Like he's Wheezy's like her stories are like, oh yeah, I was hanging out with Pharrell. I was hanging out with yeah, yeah, Jay Z yeah. and Beyonce. These aren't like. Oh, that person has a good social media following. These are like famous yeah. people, and they're both just like, sure. Both of them seem like they're gonna speak up on their own behalf, obviously when they absolutely need to. But they're mm-hmm. not trying. They're not like thirsty, just flexing. Like I do this, 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 and this. And we're talking about this off mic, but that's like biggest thing that I've learned with successful people is they're humble. Like when I post, when I host comedy shows. And there's a dude who's a host of a network television show and has a Netflix special. And I'm like, what do you yeah. want? What do you want for your intro? It doesn't matter, man. You can say whatever. Yeah. And then you see someone who maybe has a tiny bit of a social media following. And you ask, oh, what do you want me to say for them? And like, you have to say, I've gotten this amount of views. And it almost yeah. just comes off as too desperate. And it's like, bro, if you if you just if you're kind to people, if you're humble but confident. It's all going to take care of itself, and a so that's what I appreciate percent. about those two. Yeah, so man, that's that's huge. Um, but yeah, shout out to them. That was a great conversation, and um, yeah, check out Horrible Decisions. Check out for fact's sake if you need a podcast recorded or you want to meet me in real life. 
pull up to WTF Media Studios. And before we get out of here, Danny likes to end with his isms, which is his life lesson of the day. So hit us with a quick one, Danny. My little itty itty bitty ism this week is for me, and for a lot of us, I think it should be, is a season of showing up for showing up. So what I mean by that is a lot of us maybe are doing jobs or doing things that feel exhausting, or maybe we feel like we're over qualify for maybe you were laid off during the pandemic and now you're working in a job that you don't necessarily love or whatever the thing is and you feel like i'm not making enough money i'm not able to do the things that i want to do or uh, that i used to do and for me and for a lot of us this time in our lives is just for showing up and building connections with people right building that equity with people and not to say that everything you do is for to get something in return but there's there's zero chance you'll ever get anything in return if you never do anything. But there's mm-hmm. a small chance, at least, that you'll get something from somebody if you do stuff for them. And it's not that, like I said, it's not that you just do things just to get something back. And that thing that you get back might not always be a job. It might just be a fucking good friend that you can rely on. It might be someone that randomly can just take you to the airport once. or whatever. It can be the small things, but it's, I think, I've... I struggle with this a bunch recently. Like, bro, I'm working the hardest I ever made, as I ever have, but I'm making less than I ever right. made damn near since I graduated college. But I feel like I've made so many more meaningful relationships. Our relationship, starting this pod, Eddie, you know, me and Eddie have kicked it and just got coffee and just sh- shot the shit, you know, for an hour or two. Right. Wheezy, same thing, you know, helping. I was one of the first engineers at the studio, and it's like, the things that I've helped kind of just just being around and just the little chores and stuff have allowed me to be cool with Wheezy and Claire, who helps run the studio and just have right. relationships with people. And Alex, when and he comes, it's like... Keep naming more people people don't know. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. But these, I'm messing with you. No, it's our, a great point. People, it's people, a great in point. Our, people in our circle know, but yeah. you know, Wheezy co-owns this. Alex, who also comes on, owns this. I'm messing with yeah, you, bro. I'm able to explain, explain it, so. though. Alex co-owns the space and owns the... Uh, there's another studio in New York, and he works with a massive podcaster that we mentioned, Flagrant 2, Andrew Schultz. Right. And he and Wheezy are people that have really been on the ground floor of this whole podcasting. The way we see podcasting now... They have literally had a significant hand in the way in which we see clips, where specials are on YouTube. This whole wave, these people have really built it. And um, tastemakers, they're tastemakers. There's just value in just showing up and being consistent. To Weezy's point, I mean, God willing, hopefully, yeah, I can be at this, you know, my new role or new season in life and be able to hire people and blow up and get JFL and all this kind of shit. But sometimes if you aren't good to people and don't show up, when you do get those things, you're going to be, you're going to still be further back than the where you thought you would. Yeah. When you got those things. So that's all. It's the season of showing up, dog. Show up. Show, you got to show, show up. Show and us. honestly, the biggest thing I took from that is Danny said mine, his relationship. He admits we got to, we're friends. Yeah. Despite. I got it on comments. record. Despite the comments uh, in, the, in the race baiting, we are friends. Sorry. Sorry, America. Print that. <laughs> That's been another episode of Callbacks. Make sure you follow us on Instagram at Callbacks Pod and yep. on TikTok and YouTube. Subscribe and watch on YouTube. Rate and review, please. But share with a friend. We love you guys. Please, baby, 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 please. Get home safe. Love you. Bye. Bye.